Be me, camping in a woods with my long-time best friend for a week. He's got around 50 acres that spills into straight forest. Just the basics. Tin food, water, that kind of shit. Sleeping in the bed of my truck because I am poor. No money for a tent or a camper. First day goes well enough. Talked the day away while we fished. Head to bed. Cap truck off in case rain. Sleep like a little baby bitch. Wake up at around 7 or 8. Debate getting a fire going to cook breakfast. Friend tells me he's gonna stop prepping food and that I need to get firewood. Walk off into the woods with a shitty little Coleman's hatchet. Start breaking down little dead trees. Get an armful of wood before I head back. Super uneasy feeling, like when you fuck up and you know it. Like someone took everything out of my stomach and replaced it with primal fear. Sketched out, but think nothing of it. Head back to camp with wood and spooks. Cook breakfast. Consisted of warmed up canned ravioli. Not buying ice in a cooler so I can eat fucking eggs in the woods. Eat our fill, pack up leftovers, and head hiking. Make sure to pack stuff back into truck and lock it. Hike for about an hour. Stop in a clearing and enjoy the view. Nothing but long grass in the middle and trees all around us. Brokeback Mountain gif. Enjoy the air. Head back into the woods. Hiking back. Food sitting like a fucking brick in my stomach. Walk for what feels like hours. Oh shit. What time is it? Check watch. Only around 2 or so. Not bad. Left at 11. Wait. Shouldn't we be at camp? And why does nothing look familiar? Panic mode engaged. Freak out to friend. Gonna die in the woods. He says we're fine. The camp shouldn't be too far. Walk from maybe 15 to 20 minutes more. Oh shit, there it is. No problems here. Unlock truck. Turn on radio to cool nerves. Not too far out. Shitty signal, but enough to get something. Relax for a couple of hours talking about love life and shit. No girl for my own, but whatevs. Don't want ravioli again. Go fishing for dinner. Down at pond from yesterday, trying to catch something worth eating. Nothing so far. The entire pond seems dead still. Whatever, it's the evening. Lots of critters to disturb the water. Managed to catch two or three little fish. Not sure what type, but no bigger than my hand. How do I skin a fish? Bring back to camp, enjoying how quiet it is. Get back and start skinning and deboning fish. Feel uneasy, but think nothing of it. Chomping down on fish. Can't stop thinking about how still the pond was. Friend breaks the silence. Shit, man. You were gone for a while. Not a lot of luck today? Nah. Swear to God, it was like there was no fucking fish in there today. Spooky as fuck. The entire forest seemed kind of quiet today. Sit and ponder for a bit. Did I hear any birds on the way back? No, I don't think I did. Was there any wind at all? Any breeze? Shit. I don't think there was that either. Not liking this one bit. Don't want to pussy out on friend by calling it quits this early. Whatever. I'm just tired. Fix mattress in the bed of my truck for the night. No homo. Make a little fire and start burning shit to pass the time. Just does not feel right. Ask my friend if he's ever gone this far back there. Yeah, I used to come back here with my dad all the time. Little backstory here. Friend's parents died about a year ago. Super fucking loaded. Left house to him. Money to other family. Ask if he had any spooks back this far. Says nothing too bad. The worst was this hermit that lived about two or three miles out past the property line. He did not bother them. They didn't bother him. Shrug it off and head to bed. Wake up at around two or three. Shivering like a motherfucker. It's bad. Lay under the blanket for a bit. Decide fuck it. I'm gonna walk around to try and wear myself out and fall back asleep. Climb out of bed. Careful not to wake my friend up. Not a dumbass, so I make sure to keep the tent in view. Walking in place, enjoying the stars and crickets. Here's something off in the distance. My mind playing tricks on me. Strain my ears to listen better. Crickets. 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 Silence. Ungodly moaning slash muffled screaming. Shit my ass as I rush to wake up friend. Get the fuck up. Immediately tell him to be quiet and listen. He hears it too. Can't be too far off with how muffled it sounds. Imagine covering your mouth with a pillow 
and screaming into it, like pure screams, enough to crack your voice. Now play that far off into the woods, just barely loud enough to hear. Stomach is a swirling mess of emotions and shit, not sure what to do. Friend tells me they've got lots of coyotes back there. Maybe one of them got a hold of a fox and killed it. Yeah, maybe. Sounds vaguely sentient though, like it's pleading. Lay in bed listening to the screams for what feels like forever before finally passing out. Wake up the next morning, exhausted. Mind is cloudy. Can't think to save my life. Go take a piss out in the woods. Crunching leaves that empty free. Hairs on back of neck stand up. Fight or flight activating. It's my friend getting sticks to make another fire. Well, what happened to the firewood from before? Up and left. Must have burned for it all. Wait, shit. I get cell reception from out here. Remember friend telling me about fox screams last night? Google fox scream human. Video of vixen screams. Watch them. They sound close, but something about it seems too animal, like it did not have that fear behind it. Chalk it up to being tired. The rest of the day was the usual stuff. Start fire, cook food, hike a bit, swim in pond some, make bed for a night. Laying in bed, refusing to fall asleep for fear of getting fucking gutted by skinwalkers or some shit. Hear the crickets again. Something about it is just so calming to me. About to fall asleep when I hear it. Muffled screams like before, only clearer. Swear on my life, I can hear something behind it. Can only make out stronger parts of the word, like a drawn out ah noise or something. Eyes are welling up with tears. I don't want to die, man. Sit in bed until sun comes up. Decide fuck it. We got today and tomorrow and then we are gone. I want to know what this noise is. Tell friend that I want to head out back towards the opening that we found. Seems uneasy about it, but agrees. Walking out. No talking between the two of us. Lifelong friends. This shit does not happen often. Always something to talk about. Around halfway there, friend falls and twists his ankle pretty badly. God fuck it, why now? Help him back to the truck and set him in the passenger seat. Wait with him to make sure he is okay. Gradually gets more and more pasty. Cold skin, like a fever feeling. Fuck dude, that's no good. Sit with him and talk. I want my bro to be okay. No good food to comfort, just ravioli and potted meat. Lap of luxury. Talk over our options. He can barely walk, so it would not be easy getting him from A to B, and I really want to check out that noise from earlier. Fuck man, what do? Fuck it. I have this unexplainable pull towards this. Tell him I'll be right back and book it out. Sprinting through forest. I need to know what this is. Get to clearing in maybe half an hour. Not too bad considering the distance from the camp. Again, no birds, no ambient noise, just pure piercing silence. Don't feel safe in the slightest, but I want answers. Cross clearing into other section of woods. Much denser. Like peaks through, but in very small spurts. Kinda like a basement in the evening. Seeable but dark. Walking super carefully. I don't fuck with no spirits. See a little cairn, about 40 feet out. Go and check it out. Blue rags, long stringy black hair, and an ungodly smell. Pull rags out. They're made of denim. Okay, fuck this shit. Tree guys got burial mounds covered in tattered clothes and hair. Nope the fuck out. Running through clearing. Stop to catch breath. Now, to get a scale of things. The clearing was maybe a football field and a half, and I am not a runner. Winded and gasping. All of a sudden, hear that scream as clear as day. Whip my head around. Tall, gaunt, woman-like figure, standing in the tree line. I freeze up. This is how it ends. Feel an intense wave of calm wash over me. I am safe here. I want to go to her and learn who she is. Very beautiful and seemingly angelic in nature. All but forget about sick and dying bro. Fuck, I need to get back. Turn around to run, and I hear it. Branches snapping, grass rustling. Oh sweet dick, I'm gonna die here. Run faster than a fucking Olympian athlete. Legs taking me Mach 7 down from my trail. Entire time, nothing but sobbing and moaning from behind me. 
gradually slows down, like I got a tether and kept going. Stopped to catch my breath, about five minutes from camp. Back is to a tree. Don't want ghost bitches sneaking up on me. Gasping and panting. Feel hand on shoulder. It's bro. Freak out. Start talking a million miles a minute. See this ungodly fear in his eyes. He says nothing to me. Walk back to camp, scared shitless. Bro will not say anything to me as we pack up. Car drive home. Spend the night at my place, because he says he wants time away from his own home. Up until maybe two, talking each other down. All of a sudden, bursts into hysterics. Blabbering fool. Sounds like a toddler learning to speak. Calm him down, and ask him what the fuck he's doing. Says that he got spooked after the second night of screaming. That he heard it too. Set his phone to record audio during our sleep. Skimmed through it in the hour that I was gone. Says he got through about four hours of cherry-picked sound when he saw something out of the corner of his eye. Super fast blur. Long arms. Skinny body. Dark hair. Says that he heard some kind of unholy laughter as it left, like it was playing a game. Ran in my direction. He couldn't do anything. Twisted ankle and sickness. Kept listening to audio. Around what would be about 5am, hears rustling in recording. Uneven gait, like step, 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 step. Giggling, almost like a child. Stops after a while. Rattling in the sound of my truck bed opening. Rustling shortly afterwards, and what sounds like cooing, like a mother soothing a child. Zipper unzipping. Cloth tearing. Bed latching. Sprinting. Check back. Missing a pair of jeans. Wait just a fuck. Karen in the forest. Fucking clothes. Inexplicable pull. Oh god. Whatever that thing was, made a fucking burial site for me. Why? Why? Fucking why? Freak out. Lock doors. Close blinds. Sit in bedroom with friend. Sit there until morning and drive back to house. Entire place is torn up. Glass shattered. Furniture torn. Doors scratched. It was looking for us here. Not enough money in the world would get my friend to stay here and not enough to get me to let him. Pack what little he can salvage and bring him back to my house. This was maybe a month ago. Dude's been staying here while we tried to figure out what to do. May just tear the place down and sell the land. No way we're going to try and fix it up to sell it. Still have no clue what that woman was, but I know for a fact it was not anything that I want to remember. I'll try to answer any questions as best as I can. This whole story. OP, you better thank fuck every goddamn day that you still breathe. You saw that wayfish woman by the cairn. Wayfish woman made eye contact with you. You felt calm, at ease, compelled to approach her, to approach the gravesite, but your friend, who twisted his ankle minutes ago, was alone in the truck. That memory, that thought, was enough to distract you, just enough to snap out of it. Once you turned away, the fear came back and you were pursued. The moment your friend lost his footing and twisted his shit up, that was the fork in the path of your fate that led you to not becoming some creature's fucked up torture doll and never leaving those woods again. This was the big tip off. Basically, wayfish woman creeping up to your truck at night, giggling, opens up the bed where you and your friend are sleeping, rustling, starts sifting through your stuff, cooing. You woke up or were going to wake up and she did it. The thing where she makes you calm and at ease and you fell back asleep. You almost woke up to the sight of that thing hunched over in your truck bed, with you, looking at you. In fact, you fucking might have done just that, but the relaxing thing made you go back to sleep and forget about it. It took your pants, because they seemed valuable to you, and smelled a lot like you. It knew that you were curious. It knew that you would look for them. It led you to the grave that it made for you. It was waiting for you there. It started to draw you in, by doing the relaxing thing again, and you almost walked right into your own grave. It did not plan on your friend getting fucked up. It did not plan on you remembering him and turning around. It was going to take you, and then take your friend. You fucking got away by a fucking hair. I have never visited this board, so excuse any errors I make regarding board culture. 
Here is a story that is currently happening to me. I'll give a little background and then go green text. My buddy David has 800 acres near Galena, Alaska. We're up here building onto his house and fishing the nearby rivers on our off days. We're about 15 miles back on a gravel road that goes further onto BLM. There are a few logging trucks a day on the main road, but basically no traffic after the sun sets. The first day we got here together in my Tacoma 4x4, we unscrewed the plywood off the windows, brought our bags onto the porch, got his generator started up, and unlocked his various outbuildings. The air was stale and a little rank, like a dead cat. Open side door to kitchen, open the back door of the cabin and the windows that you could open. Didn't go upstairs, just let the place air out. Sat down on the porch to rest and quench our first. It's only been in the low 60s, but the plywood was heavy. We sat there and planned our remodel, generally shot the shit. Happy to be here. He fiddled with his bait and tackle, and I admired the view from the front porch. Now I'm not really a ghost or spirit believer, but I saw something last weekend. It is real quiet, and there was a lull in our conversation. Then, out of the corner of my eye, I saw somebody walk out the open kitchen door. I rotated in my seat to see who was there. I barely saw the guy turn the corner towards the back of the house, towards the forest. What the fuck, David yells. Did you see that motherfucker? I did, dude. Who the fuck is that? David runs out to his truck where he has a Mossberg 590A. It's buried deep in our knack boxes and we had a bunch of shit to unload to get to it. We just throw shit out of the truck till we get the box open. We decide to search the rest of the house first, scatter gun in hand. We go upstairs. We look into the two bedrooms, under beds and everything. Nothing. No sign of squatters, animals, nothing. We both affirm that we saw a little man with no shirt walk out of the kitchen door to our left from the main porch. We then go back towards the forest. The house and the pad that they built it on has a thick gravel base right up to the forest. The forest floor is a thick mat of leaves, needles, and duff, and hard to track in. We looked all around and found no tracks. With the sun going down and all of our shit exposed, we decided going further into the forest was a bad idea. We both go back inside and close all of our windows, unpack our tools, set up our gear in the lower two bedrooms. We regroup in the kitchen and start guessing who that was. Was it a squatter that was living elsewhere on the land and heard us opening up the plywood? Thief? An animal? Either way, we're two badass carpenters with guns and not afraid to throw down with some little fucker. We both go to bed. The next day, we start setting up our tools and saws under tarps. We had the shotgun on a sawhorse nearby. Unloaded table saws and meter saws setting up saw horses getting all the blades adjusted and going through the lumber that he has on site. We brought cement to pour a post and pier foundation for his addition. We unloaded and decided to go fish in a river about 300 yards downhill from us. He caught two trout right off the bat and I caught one about 20 minutes in. It slowed down after that and we hiked further upstream. That's when we heard rustling across the stream from us. It could have been any number of animals, so we stood sharp. We fished there for about two more hours, and Dave started gutting the fish that we had. We both head up to the house to wash up and fry some fish. After the last few bites of fish go down, Dave stands up at the table. He says he left his benchmate down where he was gutting the trout. He grabs a flashlight and heads down there. He said he looked for the rock with the fish guts on them. Said his knife was there, but the fish guts were gone. He half jogged back to hide being scared. Later that night, right after we both go to our bedrooms and shut off the lights, in the total silence, I hear footsteps on the second story. I think maybe an animal or squirrel snuck up there. Try to ignore it. It gets more frequent, with the steps going away from me towards the staircase. Dave calls out loudly. Is that you up there? No, I answer. Now to my bedroom door. We both open our doors at the same time and step into the main room. We bumped off of each other in the dark and both looked at the upper staircase. I saw what looked like a small boy, but his face was almost featureless, and his eyes 
seemed pitch black in the low light. Dave says, Who the fuck are you? The figure slowly steps to the railing like he was going to answer us. Instead, he let out an incredibly loud, ear-ripping screech, like what you imagine a T-Rex would sound like. It was so loud, I covered my ears and stumbled to the floor in the dark. It was so loud, it disoriented me. From the ground, I look up at the second floor, just in time to see it run back into the bedroom. Dave ran past me with his mask broken hand. Dave ran to the top of the stairs and turned the hall light on. He then ran straight into the bedroom and out of my sight. Boom, boom, boom. At this point, I am beyond scared and almost physically shutting down, like heat stroke or hypothermia. I knew that those gunshots meant that Dave may have just killed somebody. Dave reappears at the top of the staircase. He jumped out of the window and ran into the forest. He's like deformed. His back was all fucked up and he was on his hands and knees. What? Did you hit him? If his legs are fucked up, how did he run away? I don't know, but he jumped out and ran into the trees. We both went out the back door and turned on the exterior lights. There was no blood on the gravel. The smell of burnt powder was still in the wind. Was he up there all day? He must have been. He probably snuck up there while we were working. So why would he go up there? Anything of value? Fucking nothing. Just some old blankets and pillows. Dave, do you have your game cam? Yes, it's in the truck. He goes out to his truck while I watch from the front door. Again, the enormous sound shatters the night. I imagined that the sonic crowd control weapons you hear about would feel like this. I instinctually covered my ears and let go a little pee into my boxers. Dave had dropped his gun and his keys out of shock. He jumped into the Tacoma and locked the door. Keys and shotgun on the ground outside of his truck. I close the front door and stare at Dave through the window. He can see behind the house and I can't. His mouth is agape. Figure, fuck this. Run out towards the truck. Grab gun, grab keys, and beat on the window for Dave to open up. He turns to me, as white as a ghost, and opens the door. Frankly, I'm too afraid to look up towards the back of the house and just rush back to the door with Dave in my arms. I slam the front door and start locking all the doors and windows. Dave is pretty much in shock. What did you see? What did you see? Dave swallows deeply and says, It was a stretched out dead guy that roared at us. He then rolls over and barfs on his floor. I am really starting to panic and experience tunnel vision. I never knew what he meant until that moment. I give Dave a rag and we sit on the couches. Who the fuck was it, Dave? A dead guy? It looked dead and ashy, but it made that noise and then made a scary face when it saw me. Its face moved into an evil shape. Let's leave, dude. I can't leave all my tools here. Let's drive into town and get a motel then. Okay. We grabbed our phones and wallets and the Mossberg. Dave insisted on setting up the game cam before we left. He wanted it on the front door, but I said, let's put it out back on a tree to see if this thing comes back. He put up the game cam on a tree directly behind his house under full gun coverage. We then jump into the Tacoma and peel away from the house. We drove back into town and everything is booked, so we sleep in the truck. In the morning, after breakfast, we drive back to his place. We pack up all of our tools as quickly as we can. We screw the plywood back up, then with the engine already running, I go and retrieve the game cam. I didn't get to download them until today, when I got back home. I'm pretty sure what we saw was that little man in the center and a little left of the tree. If you want to be absolutely ridiculed and laughed at by everyone, bring up the subject. It does not make them any less real. Hairy people that don't use fire have been a thing all over the world for eons. I know about them as a happy accident and only later decided to research them. Be me, 24 year old game warden. Fix fences and pretend to enforce hunting laws. Woohoo, fuck my life. 
best and worst job I ever had. Lots of time in a woods though. Lots of interaction with park rangers. Lots of interaction with cops. Guess whose phone rings if there is an issue with wildlife or something the cops don't want to listen to. Uh, sir, I'm going to have to refer you to Fish and Game. The outfit was like me and five of our guys. We would take turns working the phones back then. One day, cops ring us up. Hey Anon, this might sound weird, but one of our sheriffs hit a bear with his car and thinks that you should come and look at it. What the fuck do you want me to do? Ticket him for killing a bear without tags? You should just get out here. I'm sorry, I can't say more. Gives me the location. Try to get other game warden bro to go and deal with it. Fuck you, Anon. I'm not making a 30 minute drive. This is probably a joke. God damn it, Daddy Ixie. Warm up the truck. Drive out there. It takes 40 minutes because fuck off blizzard. The cops have part of the highway closed off. Get out of the truck and walk up to a dented interceptor and four cops looking uncomfortable as fuck. They show me what he hit. Not a bear. It's fucking Sasquatch. The younger ones get hit by cars all the time. Heave it into the bed of my truck and burn it the next day out back of the office. Park rangers have told me, Anyone that writes up a report about one gets canned. Well, to be fair, the park rangers dealt with them more than we did. Here's another one. This still kind of bothers me a bit. Park rangers are being more active than usual. Doing my odious task of fence fixing. Five park rangers walk past me, armed to the teeth. Lol, where's the war fellas? Dirty looks from all of them. Ask me if I've heard anyone screaming. Uh, no? Walk off into the woods. Hear gunfire an hour later. Oh shit. Run up there and try to figure out what is happening. I hear hunters take shots all the time, but this is very different. Maybe some good old boys getting trigger happy after a few beers. Come upon a bunch of park rangers. Same ones from earlier. There is blood on the grass and they've got something huge covered with a tarp. Fuck off Anon. Nobody called fish and game. What's under the tarp, asshole? None of your business. Proceed to fuck off, because park rangers have never looked this scary before. Find out later it was a big male that had rabies. Killed free campers a few miles away. Note, this happened before above incident, which is why I sort of already knew about it. I'm not sure if I can quite green text this, so I'll do it as a regular post. My maternal grandfather had died in 1972, a full 20 years before I was born. I had just been a few months old at the time when my mom was living on the top floor apartment of a place. My father had bailed on us to go fuck around in Florida. I remember the story as my mother told me. One night, she'd put me in bed, doing the last of some chores, when these two Hispanic guys came knocking at the door. They were apparently looking for some dude who lived in the apartment named Ernie and that he'd screwed them over in a drug deal which made them go there. My mom does not know this Ernie at all but they don't take that as an answer so they keep pressing her on the issue. She keeps telling them that she does not know an Ernie at all and that only her and I live there. One of the Hispanic dudes gets angry and calls bullshit so he tries to break the door open. Screaming, he's going to kill her if she doesn't stop being honest. That's when according to her, the door to the place swings open and apparently, the guy trying to force himself in was forcefully pushed back and ended up hitting the wooden staircase that led to the apartment hard. The other guy apparently becomes scared and grabs his friend and bolts for it. Fast forward about 22 years later, I start working at a restaurant when I run into this guy who worked there who we will call Nick. Nick was a dishwasher while I was a cook and we were chatting out back when we both came to realize that he was one of the guys who came to my mom's door that night. Try to apologize about the whole thing, but I tell him I don't even remember since I was only a baby at the time. Apparently, after what happened, he turned himself in and decided to try and straighten his life out. I asked him what scared him so bad that night and he explained to me why. Nick explains that in his home, he was taught that spirits watch over those of family as protectors and that if you harm someone the spirit is protecting, they will have vengeance on you for it. 
When he saw what happened to his friend on that night, he apparently knew it was time to run because he was fully afraid of whomever that spirit was. He asked me if anyone died in her family prior to me being born and I tell her my grandfather. Says that it made sense to him at that point. He believed my grandfather's spirit had come to intervene in the matter and he was glad he didn't go so far as to bring about his ghost wrath. When I ask why, Nick says it's because humans are flesh. Battling incorporeal spirits would never work for anyone.